Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very, very special episode of Esoteric Atlanta. This is an a, a episode that was actually inspired by Miss Angie here. We're going to be doing a deep dive, a deep look into the Sophia Code with the, the originator of the Sophia Code in our little community, which isn't me. It's Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga. Before we get into the episode, we do have to take a word from our sponsors. You guys know that I love a good workout. I love to sweat every single day. I work out about six days a week, at least two hours on my yoga mat, doing Ashtanga yoga or doing a bar class. When one works out, their muscles break down. I, I tell my students here in Atlanta, I've been sore for about 17 years. And as we start to age, we start to uh, have a harder time repairing those broken down muscles. Now, a few months ago, my my friend Catherine Edwards introduced me to the product ASEA. I had been offered sponsorships before, but I had always turned them down because the integrity of the company didn't align with my own integrity. But the more I studied about ASEA, the more I studied about the owners, the person who came up with the formula for ASEA, the more I liked this company. And then I started to try the product. So what is ASEA? Again, when you work out, when you rip your muscles apart, there has to be a rebuilding system. When that rebuild happens, that is when your body technically gets stronger. We have in our body something called redox. Redox is this thing that helps. It's a signaling system between your cells. Now, when we are young, when we're kids, before we hit puberty, we have a lot of redox. That's why children are young and healthy and they can fall out of trees and skin their knees and be fine and recover quickly. But as we get older, that redox becomes less and less and less. So it doesn't really matter how healthy the cells are and the cells cannot properly communicate with each other. This means that as we get older, we start to feel more body aches. We start to get wrinkles. We start to get saggy skin. We start to get gray hair. For men, this means that the hair starts to thin and fall out. Again, it's like having a cell phone. What's the good in having an iPhone, like my iPhone, if there's no cell system to work it. The ASEA is the cellular system. Now, again, I'm a pretty healthy person. I work really hard on my health, so I wasn't expecting a huge difference with the redox. However, the benefits that I've experienced over these last two months of being on ASEA have been unbelievable. I feel younger. I'm sleeping better. I feel like my quality of life is better. Even my hair, I've always had really thick hair, but now my hair is like gotten doubly thick and it's growing like crazy. I literally just got my hair cut like two weeks ago and I am about to have to make another appointment to get it cut again because it is unbelievable how fast my hair is growing since taking this redox system. My nails are growing faster. Even my boyfriend, my boyfriend who is in his early 50s is starting to thin out at the top of the hair as what, what happens to men. And even he is starting to notice his hair grow back, which which is common. If you look at the uh, the stories from ASEA, so many men have grown their hair back simply by adding redox back into their body. There are countless stories of people who have lowered their blood pressure, gotten off medications, cut their medications in half because their body is being supplied with the cellular system it needs to do what the body is supposed to do, and that is heal itself. Now, basically what you do is when you get your redox in, you can hear it's a liquid. It's a liquid. This comes with a little shot glass, a two, a two ounce shot glass. Most people will take between four and eight ounces of ASEA a day. I take eight ounces a day because I'm obsessed with this product. So you pour two ounces into the shot glass, you swish it around your mouth for 30 to 60 seconds, and then you swallow. That's it. You can't overdose with this product. If you take too much, your body will just pee it out. Now, when you take the liquid, you're allowing the intelligence of your body to take the redox where the body needs the the redox to go. I've told you guys before, I struggle heavily with it, with arthritis. And in the past, I have taken medications for my arthritis, but I do know that arthritis is caused by overthought. It's caused by anxiety. However, medication coming from my doctor only dealt with the issue of the arthritis, not the cause. But when I started taking the ASEA about three days into taking this, I noticed that I was a lot calmer. My anxiety had dissipated. And I thought, how interesting is that? How interesting? interesting is that my body 
knew that the source of the issue with my joints was coming from my own mind. So where did it send the redux? To my mind. There's also a topical gel that I really like. So when you take the liquid, again, you're allowing your body its own intelligence to take the redox where it is needed to help heal the body. But with the topical gel, you are able to put the gel where you want it put. I have been putting this on my legs for a while now. It has helped so much with the tightening of the skin, with cellulite, with varicose veins. It's also helped with the soreness of my legs. My legs get real sore from working out. I've been actually even putting this on my boobs you guys now again i'm 40 i've never had children so my boobs don't drop that much but i've been kind of putting it on my boobs too and i tell you my boyfriend really likes that so so this is a really awesome product but despite the the vanity if you have a sore leg or a sore knee or a sore neck you can put this on and direct the redox into the area that is in pain or inflamed and the redox will help with that so i even use this when i'm on my period when i get my cramps i take some of the redox and i put it topically over the area where my uterus is and it it helps my boyfriend again has been putting the gel in his hair which is helping his hair grow back right now currently if anybody knows my boyfriend he is covered in tattoos he has been getting tattoos since he was in his 20 and he right now currently is getting one of his tattoos touched up and so when he comes home tonight we're going to experiment with the gel to see if the gel heals the wound of the tattoo even faster. Now, we want everybody, I want everybody to have the best quality of life that you can have. What's the point in being a human being if you're too sick or too off balance to be able to actually enjoy your life to be actually to be able to actually work out and have fun or to go bike riding with your children or get down and play dolls with your grandchildren this ASEA is going to help you and help your body achieve the life that you were meant to live in happiness and peace and health and in harmony if you would like more information on ASEA then please text Bryce info to 321-216-8047 again that's Bryce info to 321-216-8047. If you're texting from another country, please make sure you put plus one, 321-216-8047. And somebody will get back to you pretty quickly. They can, you can ask any questions you like of the product. You can find out more information about the Redox system. The person on the other end of the line will walk you through every option available to you at this moment. They can even try to help you get the products at wholesale prices. So again, knowledge is power, knowledge protects, and knowledge is infinite as i say all the time on this channel if you want more information please text bryce info to 321-216-8047 okay ladies how you guys doing today you ladies do lovely ladies doing today i'm doing good how about you I am so good. I'm so excited about this episode. And I, I know you guys know before too. I'm gonna just go ahead and quickly show you guys if you're new to this channel, your first time signing in, we have Cindy at Sacred Garden Yoga. I will be putting both Cindy and Angie's links down in the description box below. But this is Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga. And then of course, Miss Angie Tillman, the fickle chickle herself. We've got her mm -hmm. page, her YouTube channel right here here now this is crazy cindy and angie now we're the three we're the three georgia girls um cindy and i are in the atlanta area angie is in athens which is really close to atlanta so we're all here from from the state of georgia um and i it's so funny because angie and i were speaking on the phone the other night cindy and she had all these things we we're talking about the sophia code the sophia code this it's it's literally so many people in our community are now reading this book i've recommended it i you guys if you're new again um i have done the sophia code on my channel you can go to my my channel to the playlist if i can get this here we go the play, playlist understanding the magdalene i have the whole sophia code on the Sophia code on that playlist if you want to listen to it we are also going through the, the Sophia code again on solutions with Aquarius rising Africa on Wednesdays we're doing that live and we're in half four right now so so just so you I'll also put those links down in the description box below but I was telling 
Angie that Cindy is the person who introduced me to the Sophia Code. And I wanted to make that very clear with everybody that's in this community. We have to give credit where credit is due. The Sophia Code was recommended to me by Miss Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga, who is one of my real life. I've, I've known, I knew Cindy long before YouTube. Um, and so, Cindy, let's start at the beginning. How did you discover the Sophia Code? Well, I was actually reading another book, and I'm not even sure what book it was, but um, when I was reading it, they kept saying, you know, Sophia, 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 and I've heard of Sophia, you know, like Sophia is like, a, but you know, I just understood her as kind of like the female principle of the divine, kind of like, you know, when we talk about the Shakti, the Shakti is the female principle of the divine, and so Sophia, whenever I would hear, I would always just think of that, you know. But for some reason, when I was reading this uh, this book about uh, Sophia, or it, it wasn't about Sophia, they just kept mentioning Sophia, it struck me differently and made me want to do a little bit more research. I'm like, well, let me just look into this more. And as I was doing the research, I came across the book, The Sophia Code, because that's one of the first things that pop up. And so the first thing I did is I pulled up the book. Usually before I purchase a book, I'll pull up the book. I have a subscription to Scribd. Scribd, I think, is the way you say it. So I pulled it up on that first. I'm like, hmm, well, let me see if I like it. <laughs> and so I pulled it up and started reading the first few chapters. I was like, ooh, I was like there is like really something big and deep here. And that's when I ordered the book. And I remember I ordered it uh, during the summertime, maybe what, three, three, four years ago or something like that. And I was reading it through summer. Like I was going on, uh, well, I just remember like going, being on the beach or, uh, or um, we would go visit my husband's uh, family up on Lake Erie. And as I was reading the, the Sophia code, you know, you would get the transmissions and, and I felt like the the need to, to do it more. So I, you know, I would do it once and then I would go through and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go through this again. And just these big, big changes, big move, like big, more like internal movement, big internal change that I felt it was very powerful. The initiations that are in here, because, you know, sometimes you get a book and you don't know what you're going to get. You're like, mm, you know, it's all right. Or they say it, it's powerful, but you, in, or in, but, you know, when you read it and you're like, OK, well, that was OK. But this was like, oh, this is the real deal. Yeah. And that's what and, and, and it was just divine timing. Of course, I think that's how everything shows up to us. It was my time. You know, I, 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 perhaps I wasn't ready to receive it beforehand, even though I have heard about Sophia and all this, but never, I've heard of the book Sophia Co, but was never interested in delving into it. And I think it's one of those where it does meet you when you're ready to receive it. It's well, kind of one of those texts, that. like when you read the Bhagavad Gita, or when you read through the Yoga Sutras, you know, they kind of meet you with where you are and how ready you are to receive it. And I think it's the same with this book as well and she says that i can't i think she says that multiple times like the, the person who wrote the book and then the channeling where it's like if you're reading this this is not going to be for everyone like not everybody is going this is for you specifically the person reading this and yeah it's um so i you know i've obviously known you cindy for a very long time and um i trust everything you also recommended megan waterson's commentary on Magdalene's gospel, which we did. And so uh, Cindy will just say books and I'll just remember them. I'll go home and order them because I know Cindy hmm. personally, and I know how invested she is in her own spiritual walk and her own teaching and understanding this. And so when I cracked this sucker open and I didn't even do any background on it, I just started reading it on my channel and man, oh man, I was saying, I was telling you guys off camera and I was saying to Shanti, like, cause we're doing it live on her, to her channel. I'm like, when I got through some of these key codes, I had to stop filming multiple times to like fix my makeup or dry my, I could not hold the tears back. It was, it's such powerful stories and they're so rooted in that human element, even though these women, these key codes, were, they were humans, but they were all, they're also coming at you from the place of an ascended master. But you feel that just that real deep 
it's it's hard to it's that deep like understanding mm-hmm. of what they're saying. And so yeah, you guys, like it was Cindy that brought this book to my attention, which then I read on my channel, which now is spreading like wildfire all over our community. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's mentioning it. So we have to give credit that Cindy was the one that actually lit that fire. And now Cindy, you do, I was trying to explain, I don't know if it was to Angie or to someone you do like at, at a sacred garden, you do like workshops around these ascended masters, correct? That are in, that are spoken about and spoken about in this book. Yeah, it's the Ascension. I do an, a, a course called Ascension. I have a part one and a part two. And through the part one, we go a lot through uh, through these key codes and, and through these specific uh, goddesses here. Um, because, you know, just like you, I've been studying these uh, goddesses and these deities for a really long time. And what I found in this book is that it felt so much more impactful and I mean, whether you believe that these goddesses are myths or whether you believe that they did actually exist in, in a, as an ascended master, <clears throat> because I know some people have a hard time wrapping their heads around that. I was like, well, were they really real or, or are these just mythical beings? Mm-hmm. And the way I see it is, it, you know, whatever you believe, it really doesn't matter. Like you can go into this and and think of them as more mythical beings, but there is an impactful story behind them. And there there's something about their energy and their essence that's very real. Just like, you know, when we talk about any other deities, even with like within the Hindu pantheon or the Greek pantheon, I got Aphrodite right here, right behind me. I don't know if you see her, <clears throat> but um they're they just hold a certain energy. They represent aspects of us. And I think if you could just look at it within that point of view, whether you believe that they're truly ascended masters and whether they actually lived or if they're mythical uh, beings, but there was something about the way that uh, they were portrayed within these stories that really brought them to life on a deeper level besides just what you might normally you know, visceral. pick up in a regular bookstore. You feel mm-hmm. and, and that's important because I think too, again, it, does, it doesn't really matter if they were alive or not, because they're tapping into an energy that exists within you already. And I, I want to mm-hmm. pause on that because I want to talk about that. I want to expand upon that. But I also, but so, but first I know Angie. So Angie, you've got Green Tara behind you, which is one of the uh, lovely ladies of the Sophia Code. And I know you're not finished with it yet, which is totally fine. We were just saying like they, the, the channeler even talks about this. Like this book is not meant to be picked up and like devoured in one night. Like this is the book that you will take your time going through. And some of these key codes, when you finish an activation, they even suggest take a week, let it integrate, let it resonate. And yeah, d- doing it a second time um, mm-hmm. on of Aquarius Rising Africa has been even more impactful for, for me. And I will say too, guys, just a side note, um, we're doing the Emerald Tablets on my channel. Guess who's the person that showed me the translation of the Emerald Tablets to get? Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> so half of my library here is all thanks to Cindy. So, <laughs> so you can thank Cindy for that as well. But before we get into what talking about pulling out activations that are already within you. Angie, is there anything you want to add or ask before we get into that? Well, it, it's a little strange probably to to how, you know, how my brain works or how things are just shown to me, but the word Tara comes up with me all the time, whether it be in the movie Gone with the Wind and the plantation is called Tara. My son is creating a game you know, an online game. And he was saying it's about Tara. Like he, he didn't even realize I'm like, what? He goes, you know, mom, it's another name for earth. And I'm like, um, green Tara, like to me, that's, um, the earth, like, you know, and I am very, very connected to the earth. Like I can hold birds in my backyard. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, just I've always been this way. I've always been like the barefoot feeling like, Oh, I, even though I'm afraid of snakes and spiders, I will sit right down in the ground and just say, they're not going to hurt me right now because I am part of, you know, I'm from this. Like I feel so at one with it. Um, so I don't really know where to go with it, but um, recently, can I say this yet, Bryce? Like yeah, recently, right, yeah. yeah, recently I was told by someone that um, she sent me while I was sleeping a million Sophia codes. 
And it just didn't sit well with me at all. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, no. Because in reading this book, <laughs> I feel like I'm being shown that I have all of this already. That to me, to me, it's it's what what when I think of like holy, 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 like the Holy Spirit, I feel like I was born with it. We all were. And so for someone to say that to me really upset me and made me think that I wasn't, that I didn't know what I already knew and that I didn't already have within me what I already have. And um, so I, that's why I really wanted to understand this more. And when I told Bryce about that, it's like, she was like, we gotta, we gotta do this with Cindy because she's really studied this a whole lot. And um yeah, I mean, I just knew, I just felt like that was not coming from a, from from the right place, and um, it was, uh, I don't know, tricking me into or tricking others that might be told the same thing from these type people, these people that are more ascended, <laughs> that um, or they think they are, or they're they, um, that there are. I'm not the only one that is being told these type things, and possibly believing I did not believe it. But um, just for there's a whole lot of a whole lot more people out there that are being told these things and they are and they're, I guess you could say, drinking the Kool-Aid, you know, and where I see like this makes me feel good about myself. This makes me feel when I read this book, like when Bryce said, it's kind of like her Bible. Same for me. Like it makes me feel good. It makes me feel um, I, I completely resonate with with every word of it. And I keep having to go back and read it over and over and over to go, yes, yes, you really did get that the first time, Angie. And, uh, and it's okay. It's okay to believe that and you're within yourself to know that you, you embody all of this already. And, um, it's just like a sort of like a, um, awakening of it that's already there. Does that make sense? So it's already there and it's helping me to, um, realize it and awaken to what is already within my spirit. Yeah, and I think we could start with that by just like what exactly is the Sophia Code? Not the book itself, but mm -hmm. the Code of Sophia. And the way that I take it is when they're talking that it's something that's in your spiritual DNA already. And also in your physical DNA, like the, the, the Shiva, the Shakti, the, twine, the intertwining of both. And you can't... We know that some of these suckers can modify DNA, but you really can't. You know, God doesn't make junk. And we know that we have 10 strands of DNA that are not active, um, that we are we're working through what they call the ascension to activate those. And when I re first read the Sophia Code, I thought about what actually is the Sophia Code. It's a spiritual DNA strand that already exists within you. So you were born with it. And they even say in the Sophia Code over and over again, which contradicts the church, that you were born with the Holy Spirit. You have this thing called the Holy Shekinah or the Holy, that's part of why you're human. And when you read the book and you go through the teachings, all it's doing with you, they're not doing it for you, but they're walking you and coaxing you through this path of activating it yourself. That's, you know, what the word savior means, someone who has saved himself so that you can save yourself. And it's beautiful the way you said that. I was thinking about some of the key codes, Angie, and I felt the same way. It's like, even though when you're going through these key codes, you're actually doing a lot of shadow work. There's a lot of like darkness that's coming up, but in the midst of healing that, you still know you're perfect. Your soul is perfect, a perfect, you know? So they're, they're talking you through like the ISIS. She's having you say that you forgive yourself for believing in a God outside of yourself that can hurt you, for, for to get, forgive yourself for believing that there's one religion that's better than another, you know? And so even in, in spite of the fact that you may have fallen for some of these mental you know, whatever you want to call them, a uh, blockages, your soul has always still been perfect. And the Sophia code was something, it is your, your privilege as a fractal of God to have this And the Sophia. So for the people, the Sophia is the great mother, right? So did she, and she talked about in the, the uh, creatrix, the, the great mother. Um, and for those who aren't aware, the missing books of the Bible speak about Sophia all the time in the missing books of the bible yeshua what who people call jesus yeshua he doesn't say my father in heaven in the missing books of the bible he says my mother father or my right. father mother he never addresses it as just father so this idea of sophia being the female 
version of God was very much a part of the original teachings of Yeshua and Magdalene. Like that was a part of the Gnostic, the original Christian faith. And the female aspect of all of us, and it's interesting, I'm going to quote Thea on Aquarius Rising Africa. Thea brought this up because there, I remember listening to a podcast, a yoga podcast, many, many, many years ago. And one of the teachers, I think it was uh, John Scott, I can't remember, but one of the big Ashtanga teachers was talking about uh, human connection and consciousness. And how when babies are born, typically a child's first word in many cases is dada. Now, now a lot of uh, early childhood development, will pe people will tell you it's because the da sound is the first sound a baby learns how to make with their tongue. But this yoga teacher had a different perspective on it. And mothers get upset because they want the baby to say mama because you birthed them, all that kind of stuff. But he's saying what the mother doesn't understand is that the baby does not see himself as separate from the mother at that point, but recognizes father as something separate. But mother and baby are one and the same. And Thea made, and I brought this up, and Thea made some made a very interesting comment because we've kind of lost, we forgot about Sophia. For many, many generations, we'd forgotten about the female aspect of God and instead we've been looking at the male aspect of God and she said is it because we already felt that we already intuitively felt that like a baby knows mama and baby are one and the same I know a mother you ladies are mothers can spot their babies cry out of any mm -hmm. baby crying because we already knew we were one with mother so we address father I thought that was just a very interesting perspective mm -hmm. and so I guess if we want to start there just talking about so what so Cindy since you've been doing this what is your perspective on the actual Sophia code not the book but the coding of Sophia is, is that pretty much how is my is or do we share a perspective on that or do you see it a little bit differently yeah no I would say that for sure and I remember <clears throat> I have it written somewhere um to you, yeah, like in the Gnostic, in the Gnostic Gospels, they talk a lot about uh, Sophia, and uh, it's interesting to read just her story too, because they have her her origin story, just like you know everyone else has their origin story. And <clears throat> I don't remember it exactly because I don't have it in front of me, but I I know that her story was a lot about dissension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like she went. She was born and then she went down and down and down through the very many different layers of being like down into um, and some people say through her dissension was when um, a lot of the uh, human what we would, would consider human traits were developed, you know, even some human traits that some might consider bad or, or evil, but it's not evil, but, you know, maybe not so great, like more of the um like the, the the other side of the spectrum that her dissension is what created the the spectrum of some of the lower density or lower frequency things but it's also we we've had this conversation so many times but we need that for contrast right we need the the the, the duality or we need the the full spectrum of living that it's not not just like one love and light but it's the full spectrum is what it is to be human and so Sophia's descent is uh, partly what caused that the the other the other parts of humanity to be born, and then she went back up through her ascension again, and that's what I found really interesting just about her her story when you read about it, like you know her origin story through the some of the Gnostic te texts, and because when we do think about and and how well that also correlates with other aspects of what we know of the divine female principle like when we think of shakti or we think of prakriti we think of this the female aspect of uh the material and or even the moon you know you got the sun and the moon the moon is the female aspect and the moon represents like the material you know what it what it does mean to to be human and to live in this world and to live in this life and how to um to go through our dissension first so that then we can ascend and i found that aspect of the story of sophia um very interesting and how that matched up with so many other uh aspects of that divine principle and that's also, you know, we talk about, I've talked about my channel a lot, you know, for female energy, that's a ponic, which is downward flowing energy. You see this, that's why women give birth. There's nothing and there's no more 
there i mean i've never given birth but i can imagine these two ladies have there is no greater downward flowing pressure than pushing a human through your hoo-ha you know like that's the portal that, that the soul comes in through the portal whereas men are more pranic they're upward energy that's why women have bigger mm -hmm. hips men have bigger bigger um chest but within each person so if there's a man watching right now and i've had many men say to me should i read the sophia code because i'm a man i'm like absolutely mm -hmm. because you have that i mean even the two nostrils we have the less left nostrils feminine the right not so even though we're all three women we're predominantly a ponic with our biological makeup we carry the divine feminine principle within us we also carry the masculine too it's that we have pranic energy that runs up and a ponic energy that runs down so so even for men watching, we're talking about a principle that lives within all humans because men have to take that descent as well before they can ascend, which was a big lesson for Magdalene too, you know, like being able to go into your humanness. Like you came down here, you are a spiritual be being, but we are having a human experience and that that when you i mean this the emerald tablets speak about this too when you face the darkness when you go through when you and that that feminine energy is also that intuitive side so that's the introspection as well of being able to go within yourself and to see your own darkness your own in order and then to bring it to the light to ascend again and we see that with a lot of the key codes a lot of the the isis the hathor the green tara uh, kuan yin magdalene white buffalo woman like we see their humanness as well and the times that and so it, it shows you i think we have this idea because we know the original definition of sin is to miss the mark it doesn't mean sin doesn't mean that you're just screwing up all the time and I don't think, from my, from my opinion, like I, I look at like the sins the church labels sins, and I'm like, but if you do these things, yeah, they they could hurt other people. But if you learn from them, then it wasn't a mistake. And Sophia also means wisdom. It's the energy of wisdom too. That's in the Apocryphon books. It's Sophia is the wisdom. So when you descend into yourself and you go through your own darkness, your own dark night of the soul, you gain wisdom from that. There is that element of returning with wisdom that you cannot you you can't i mean i love cindy i quote you all the time where you say you know without suffering there would be no mystic because mm -hmm. without suffering we don't question things if we don't question things we don't learn we don't explore and so um so yeah i i yeah that she is the feminine it's it and there is and i would suggest i always suggest read the missing books of the bible read all these things because it's so it's so fascinating so the Sophia code as human beings, spiritual beings in a human body, we have our physical DNA from our parents, but we also have spiritual DNA that lingers also within our, and Hathor goes, ha listen, I love me some Hathor, but her key code is like so sciency. Like I'm like reading her because it's all about electrons, neutrons, protons, how to get into the cell of your system. Like where this, I mean, it kind of gives me chill bumps as I'm talking about it. But I'm like, girl, you're a nerd. Like she's so sciencey <laughs> about her whole, like the, but I know a Cindy's a Reiki master. Like the electron is the energy cycle of the, it's the energy within the body. So that makes sense. That's kind of a, I almost see that as like the spiritual highway between the, pro, that kind of dances between the Prakriti and the Purusha, or the Shiva and the Shakti, that kind of intertwines the matter with spirit where these little Sophia codes exist. Does that make sense? I'm not a scientist. Yeah, and then they often uh, re refer to us as the chalice. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, I would get that word out, you know, b before even reading the Sophia code um, that we are the chalice and, you know, we're trying to restore the chalice and they refer to our our body as that we are the holy grail you know it's, that's what they she says like we are the we are the holy grail and that what we're we're trying to do is just to restore the chalice back to that original essence of understanding and knowing and and, and yeah and through even uh, and that resonates with me so much i mean the chalice is one of um it's it's a personal symbol of mine because it's shown up a lot over and over again. And, you know, I have a chalice with the roses on it and, and through the priestess program that I do, I mean, that's what we call it. It's like the order of the chalice because of the understanding that we our our body is actually supreme. And that, that also goes behind like the tantric, you know, tantric principles are also female principles that we go 
through the body to know ourselves and that our body is not like sinful or our body is not gross or our body is not something that um that we need to transcend necessarily but our body is something that we go through to know enlightenment so our body is the holy grail it is the chalice and i can't remember i think it's, it's under the the mother mary mary, mary magdalene uh, part here and it actually i think she mentions this more than one time and yeah. through the sophia code that that's about what, what that's what our human you know part of our human experience is it is you know it's about trying to understand ourselves as the as the grail itself we're also the ark of the covenant that's in that that you are the ark of the covenant as well yeah all these things that people mm -hmm. have spent eons trying to find isn't that isn't that the sense of humor of god though it's like the alchemist by paulo coelho where he thinks his personal treasure is in egypt he's from spain this little shepherd boy and so he crosses the mediterranean goes through trials and tribulations gets to egypt and realize everything he wanted is back at home mm -hmm within mm -hmm. and it, my favorite part of that book is when he's all mad at god because he went through all this shit just to get all the way to egypt to find out like everything's back at home and he was like but god you sent me on this journey knowing that and he goes yeah i did and he was like and he was complaining and god goes but weren't the pyramids beautiful like didn't you enjoy mm -hmm. like in this journey of realizing that it's all within you didn't you en enjoy it too you know weren't the pyramids beautiful though you know like so yeah it's um so yeah now um that so kind of makes me also think that a lot of people well i i get this a lot from my upbringing is that they don't want you to enjoy <laughs> the church everything want you, to enjoy, you know trying to find like when you say like missing the mark that's the sin you know is missing the mark miss missing um finding out who you are like who you really are like that you have it all within and so but we are supposed to enjoy it that's why we came back here i mean i think that's one of the reasons at least i mean it would be really that would be awful too to, to come back here and not enjoy I've been, I've yeah. laughed. We've uh, my boyfriend and I have spoken about like you know when Earth ascends, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, can we leave like a, a Google Yahoo review for Planet Earth? Like hard <laughs> terrain, but the French fries are really good. You know, like, can we leave like a, a Yahoo review for this place? Venus is better, but the French fries on Earth are really good. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah you know, we're supposed to, and that's awesome. something that I say this a lot, like Sri Swami Satyananda's commentary on the Yoga Sutras. It's something that really got me from his commentary, where he was like, the minute you viscerally understand who you are spiritually, that's when you can actually really enjoy life. The good, the bad, and the ugly, you see the you see the value in everything, and it's nothing is permanent. Mm -hmm. And that's that flow, the the prakriti, the rule of prakriti or nature, it's always changing because it has a birth of life and a death. So, um, so so I would say, like when when people if somebody's in my opinion, if someone says to you, I'm sending you a million Sophia codes, they don't actually understand what the Sophia code is. Because it's something that you have already have within you. I don't think anybody can give you a Sophia code. That's like the same thing as I feel like the church when they're like, have you accepted the Holy Spirit into your heart? Holy Spirit was already there. It was already mm -hmm. there. It, 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 you were born in with it. You were born with this spirit, with the Shekinah. So, and that's the thing too, I think we bypass a lot. You know, Cindy and I both are yoga teachers. Cindy does a lot of healing. You know, only thing, and we were talking about this kind of yesterday at the Shala, Cindy, at, at your Shala after I, we were, I taught my class. Like, only thing a teacher or a healer can do is help you and support you mm -hmm. to energetically do the work yourself. Because right. literally, mm -hmm. no, literally, no one can do this for you. Like, and that's your mm -hmm. privilege. You're privileged enough to be able to save yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like our friend mm -hmm. Eric when you know i was i was sick i'd had a concussion and i was i was putting it out there on youtube like i couldn't stand to even touch my face my it started back here but then then now the pain was on the front of my face and um and he sent me healing but he just said but you have to believe it and and i the next morning i woke up and i could feel like the pain had gone from like all here to just about out the crown of my head, you know, like about gone. And I told him this and he goes, I didn't do anything. You did it. 
you did it, Angie, mm-hmm. you did it. And, um, you know, that's him also being humble, but also uh, he's right. He's right. I did it. You know, I believed, I believed and I healed myself along with, you know, just knowing that he was sending me energy healing and I was accepting it and believing in it. And um, I totally believed it. I put it out on YouTube before I even got the healing. I just said, and I know I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be healed you know, and the next day I was, you know, completely. I mean, it was like what people would call a miracle, but yeah, we, we can. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, and that's, I know, um, and my friend Emmy, who's also Reiki master, she's all the time. Like if I send someone Reiki and they don't believe it, it's not going to do anything. You have to be, and that's the same story with Yasha when the woman who reaches out and touches the, his cloak and she magically gets better. And he says, who touched my cloak? And people are all, you, sh- you can't touch him. He's like, no, 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 no. Who was that? And she says, it's me. And I get emotional because she healed. And he yeah. goes, you only healed because you believed. Makes me emotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, I didn't, Yush was like, I didn't heal you. Yeah. You healed yourself. Yeah. I right? mean, I cried all by myself the next day when I realized what had happened. I was like, this is real. This is really real. This is very recent too, Cindy. I don't know if you've heard the story, but it was very, very recent. And it's like, wow, like I've known this, but I have, I've gone through like, you know, where I'll stand in the shower and do all this breathing. I try to heal myself of things because I was very, very sick for a couple of years. And, um, Mm -hmm. um, but just, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, it is completely real. And just a couple of days ago, same thing. Like I just all of a sudden went and I said it out loud. I went, whoop. All of that pain is completely gone, just like poof. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of that's kind of yeah, example just, of what I think the Sophia Code is. It's something within you. And like as Cindy was saying, and they do say this in the book, like you're reading this because you're at a place where you're able to accept it yeah. and, and be open to it. And so and so things start to shift within you. And it's not because some uh, bibbity boppity boo magic was given to you. It's because something within you was a, was was awakened, was activated. Mm-hmm. You, something you already know. Because if somebody can give something to you, then that means they can also take it away. Right. Nothing. These. This can be taken away from you because it's your. You were born. Does that? It's like I. I. I akin it to like. It's like we were all born in our races, right? We. Were, I'm a white lady. I was born a white lady. Nothing I can do to change that. That's my DNA this life, right? It's the same with the Sophia code. No one's going to be able to come and change that. That's just you. And, 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 and I want people to understand, like, we are all, this book was not written for one select group of people. If you find the book and read it, great, it's for you. But nowhere in this book does she say only these people can read this book. It is written literally for anybody who wants the information. There's no holds bar. And I, and I think when we, we run across these like healers who think they have some sort of power over you, that is coming from indoctrination from things like the church, where there's the special people. And then and I, I, somebody asked me this on enough is enough is enough about prophets. And I said, you know what? Everyone's a prophet. Mm-hmm. Why are you listening to somebody else when you have your own gut intuition? You have your mm-hmm. own. If, some, if somebody says something and it doesn't seem right to you, go with your gut. You know, we have this idea that certain people are more eligible to do things than others. And yes, certain people awakened will awaken faster than others. But that does not mean that the people who aren't, aren't awakened don't already have the same abilities and the same spiritual DNA. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Completely. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say if somebody says they're sending you Sophia codes, no, they're not, because you already have mm-hmm. them. Please, guys, read this book for yourself. I'll put a link to it in the description box. Because this, I mean, my because even with the with the Ascended Masters, they're not there going, I'm doing this for you. No, they're basically, I see them like, hold my hands. I'm going to help you do this for yourself. Well, isn't that what that we're all supposed to do is become Ascended masters well they say that in the sophia code that you're on the path of becoming your own ascended master and some of us have been ascended masters before yeah yeah well you know once i think i've shared with you uh this before too rice you know when i was in the shower one day i received like this you know just seeing how you receive downloads or messages or information 
um, like the, the five highest teachings of the sacred feminine, right? And it was after reading the Sophia Code and all that. And <clears throat> one of them was, um, is that the, they don't require like the ascended masters or the deities or anything. They don't require your worship. They don't even want your worship. <clears throat> what they uh, would prefer is for you to simply be the embodiment. It's like be the embodiment and be like, be me, be the, be the example. It's like, you don't necessarily have to go around um, talking about, talking about me all the time or talking about us all the time. I mean, you can, but that's not the point. The point is you go out and you actually be it. Like if you are being Hathor, being Isis or being Kuan Yin and true, like how would you actually show up and how would you do things differently in your life? It's like you, they want you to be the example, not like they don't require your worship or anything like that. Like, you know, embody it and be it. And that is, that is a female principle as well is embodiment. Like embodiment is all about then taking everything that you've learned. And so how are your relationships? How are you treating your body? What are you putting into your body? Like how is your relationship with abundance versus scarcity? Like, are you actually, how is it actually, so don't just sit there and, and talk about me, but like live, live it, live the Sophia code as if, you are already all of these beings and deities wrapped into one. Yeah. And that's, I know um, I've, I've spoken so much about Kuan Yin, but isn't that with her compassion, like to embody, I know we've talked about, we, we've spoken about Kuan Yin off camera, Cindy, because she is such a very soft character but mm -hmm. she had to go through the incredible harshness to find that softness and to be able to in those in times because we know we're on the internet we get trolled a lot we get but to be able to maintain that softness that compassion of quant that the same not not being Quan yin but that same element of compassion that Quan yin carries as well that's part of that coding that's within you um, I love the thing I love about Magdalene is how sassy she is. Like she's, you know, we see her. That was one of those shocking things in the, in the, co she was a shapeshifter, Magdalene. She was able to shape her shape, shape, shift her shape into what a lion. I think it was a lion because lions defeat the demons. And of course that can be metaphoric as well for your own defeating of, 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 demonic entities and all that kind of stuff you know but and you yeah, see that i loved how she channeled kali too yeah yeah that, that totally makes sense how she was she was like the mistress of kali you yes know? Like, like kali yeah, totally. for those who don't that. know kali's like <laughs> badass of i mean she's the ganesh is also the bringer and remover of obstacles but they're different in a lot of ways ganesh is like ho 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 he's kind of like santa claus but kali will come in and like <laughs> If you invite Kali into your your um your energy field, just wait. Your life's gonna get turned upside down and things are, and it's all for the better. You know, she's the one that's cutting off all the the heads and you know it's and it's very and that's Magdalene, right? That's that's who Magdalene mm -hmm. is and was is she's very loving and kind, but she's fierce too. Mm -hmm. She has that fierceness. So if you can have the compassion of Kuan Yin, the same not her not her compassion, but yours that is the same as hers, but also the fierceness of Magdalene. And a good example of that too, um, Cindy, are the two key codes you start with. You start with Isis and you move to Hathor. Hathor was Isis's teacher. But Isis mm -hmm. learned from Hathor, but she was still Isis and embodied, so they became two different ascended masters. She wasn't worshiping Hathor. She learned from Hathor and became the best Isis she could be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we're not here to be Yeshua. We're not here to be Magdalene. We're not, we're here to be Angie, Cindy, and Bryce, but at the best, highest ascended place that we can be. Um, they talk a lot too about mystery schools, don't they? In the Sophia Code mm -hmm. and all the mystery schools. And of course, in Hathor's activation, she speaks about all your past lives that you, we call past lives are actually happening right now, simultaneously with this life. Yeah. But they also say, you know, in your past, and, and Shanti has said this as well, the life we're living now is the accumulation of all the knowledge we've gained in these past existences. 
And so all these mystery schools, which no doubt, I mean, listen, reading about the Elysian mystery schools and how they were doing ayahuasca, I was like, I was totally there. <laughs> like, <laughs> what did you say, Angie, before we started filming? Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. I'm sure I was there. And I've never even smoked a cigarette in my life, but oh, I would yeah. totally be doing some mushrooms or something, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I can get you some of those, no problem. <laughs> so, but, you know, but you think about that, like that there are things that are beyond your, your mental understanding, but that you viscerally understand because your soul has experienced it. And now you're meeting at this, uh, this culmination of all these experiences to embody this, this Sophia code within this one existence, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's so powerful. I know. So Quan Yin was my favorite. Cindy, what's your favorite in the Sophia code? Which one? Oh yeah. It's really, when I, when I try to think of a favorite and then I think of another one and then they, that becomes a favorite. <clears throat> the one that, uh, surprise like I knew like Isis and Hathor and Mary Magdalene and uh Mother Mary I knew that they were going to be favorites because I've been you know I felt like they've been with me for a long time Kuan Yin like Green Tara I really connected with her of course because of all the earth earth work and um Kuan Yin surprised me too and then who else the the one that was most surprising was not surprising but newer to me was a white buffalo woman and i really got a lot from her and i don't know if you can see behind me right here i don't know if i, I can't grab it but there's a yellow see that yellow yeah thing yeah that's my peace pipe and i actually got the, that peace pipe after uh learning about white buffalo woman and what the peace pipe represents you know because you got the and you know in white buffalo she says well you are you are the pipe you know you are the chinumpa is what she you know what she calls the peace pipe you are the chinumpa and so you are you are the prayer but you are also the answer to your prayer and the um and how the the stick <clears throat> or whatever you call it <laughs> of the pipe is the male and then the bowl is the female and i got um the I wish I could. I can't. I've got. I've got all this stuff around me. I'd knock everything over to get the peace pipe. But the pipe it has. Um, well, hold on a second, because I can't sit here and talk about it without actually getting it out. Hold on a minute. Let me. Let me. Pull well, I was gonna out. say that's a lot. Why she's good. That's a lot. Like the story of the onk too, where the onk is uh -huh. both the female and the male. Yeah, I've got the onk right here. It's the female and the male. It's also the chalice too. And uh, so the reason that I had gotten this one, this is like a uniquely made, I got it at all tribes, all tribes.com. So it's not like, you know, a pipe that you could get at Amazon or anything. There's like, it's like a one of a kind. And this bowl is the reason I got, got it. And I like that this bowl is because it's made out of alabaster. It's a bear and alabaster is what Mary Magdalene always carried around. Right. But the bowl traditionally is made out of, like red this this kind of red dirt or red um i don't think it's red clay but it's something like that is what the the bowl of in the if you read through white buffalo woman and it also symbolizes earth like mother earth this is like the female principle and it comes together with you know the pipe like this and then this is represents who you are like you were just talking about you are the the feminine and you are the masculine and you are the smoke and you are the prayer that you put into your the peace pipe and you are the answer to your prayer and i just thought that that was very i don't know it just really touched me deeply because she was a newer uh deity for me yeah. and um i liked her a lot so anyways i got this peace pipe peace pipe just because of white buffalo woman and I'm i didn't so know glad you brought that out i'm so glad you went and got that off your shelf. <laughs> well, I, I, I was I'll bring it out too. I bring this out in uh, whenever we do uh, like certain ceremonies. You know, we do like the eight high seasons at the yoga studio, and when we do like the ascension course and all that, and we talk about white buffalo woman, we actually um, I got a special blend of stuff because I'm not a big smoker any <laughs> at all either. Um, and you know, and then the tradition behind the peace pipe too is that 
when the, the peace pipe is lit, you only have safe your conversation. Once you light the peace pipe, because that's what they did in, the, in their traditions, um, is the peace pipe is only sacred, peaceful conversations were allowed. You're not allowed to talk about war. You weren't allowed to talk about anything like that when the peace pipe would come out. Oh, I like that. Uh, I like you know, that it's a lot. I didn't know anything when I read. Yeah, Kuan Yin was my favorite because she came out of nowhere. Like it came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. when I how powerful her key code was. But I knew nothing about White Buffalo Woman either. Like I didn't know anything about. So that was, a, I can't wait to do her again. Cause the first time I read it, when I, I was more learning about her. Yeah. And it's interesting because my boyfriend does a lot of tobacco therapy, which is the piece of the, the tobacco blend, which is very different from cigarettes. He doesn't, it's not cigarettes. Oh, yeah, it's does, totally different. Totally blend. different. But he's very connected to Native American rituals and traditions himself. And Angie, you got a Native American friend now. So, yes, I do. Yes, know, I do. So. I'm excited. I'm excited about her. Yeah. Um, and just getting to know her better and um, hopefully doing some things with her soon at the North Georgia. Yes, yeah, Sarah, I'm going to, I was uh, crazy that you just mentioned that because I was sitting here thinking about her while you were talking about that peace pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Ask her. I'm, thinking, I'm sending, I got to send Sarah, my new friend, this, this whole thing. And um, she is, she's wanting to write a book called, she wants to call it War Woman. Um, there's a place mm -hmm. in the North Georgia, the war women that the Cherokee would have, um, I don't know the whole story, but they would have, um, you know, women that would go with them and to these camps where when they were in battles, I guess, with, you know, Creek Indians or whoever, whatever we're told, you know, but Sarah knows a lot about it. And she wants to write a, a, a book about the women, her ancestors, the women ancestors and the, the war women. And that's what was her. From. What, who, who are her ancestors like Cherokee. What, what tribe Cherokee. Cherokee and she's from the war woman do you know anything about war woman North Georgia well she's I know that there's a road war there's war woman road that we go yes. hiking off of I always get car sick on so does Robbie <laughs> we go hiking off of war woman road a lot up in North Georgia near that's where she's from and that's that that um festival I was telling you about over the weekend is off or woman road. And it's just like all these synchronicities keep happening. I just met this woman, Cindy. I just met her last week, like a week, a week and a half ago or so. And then right after I get invited to a festival and they're like, um, it's off war woman road. <laughs> like, of course it is. <laughs> I didn't get to go over the weekend. I'd planned on it, but we didn't go. But, um, but anyway, yeah. The universe will talk to you like that, though. Mm -hmm. The universe will talk, will, will kind mm -hmm. of nudge you in directions. Now, Angie, I know you're not finished with the Sophia Co, but is it safe to say Green Tar is your favorite so far? Yeah, my favorite so far. You know, I mean, I have, I, even like where I live right now, it's inherited property that um, I really feel like I'm the only one that cares about it. <laughs> it's the <laughs> land here, you know, like, no, we can't tear down that tree. You can't like, no, no, you can't spray a pesticide and you can't, no, we can lay sod if you want to, but it's not going to look like sod for too long because I'm letting all the weeds grow because I can eat them, <laughs> you know, and like just and that and really, if you walk out in my yard, I mean, you would never know sod was ever here, but we just had to lay it to, you know, to, to get our certificate of op occupancy you got to have some grass down or whatever but um no i mean i won't allow any any kind of um chemicals here and is in this land has been untouched for gosh hundreds of years i would think well since well for sure since like the 60s and there were cows mm -hmm. here forever so it was just cows and pasture and so yeah i feel really good about it and all the vegetables i grow here i know I know they're well, safe. Let's, so I want, I, I meant to pull up your website because you guys, Miss Angie has a website called Fickle Chickle where she pickles. <laughs> and so it's very, it's, it's interesting. You talk about being connected to green Tara and the land because uh, Lord, I can't, I can't pickle. Like, I don't know. I mean, this is very, I, I mean, I know I could learn, but I don't think that, uh, sorry, I'm pulling your website up right now, Angie, as we All talk. right. It's fickles.com. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'm going to show it on out on the, on the web, on the screen here. Um, so it's very interesting that, yeah, of course you are naturally 
drawn my my computer slow so there should be an image here you guys so um mm -hmm. but if you go i will put angie's this website down in the description box below along with cindy's websites to you guys because i know um mm -hmm. angie you you'll ship to other states correct yeah i ship all over the u.s and like every day i'll have to get some stuff from you <laughs> well it sounds delicious i'll just bring we you love some. pickles at our house I'll bring I mean, you I'm, some over there. I'm sorry, my computer is being <laughs> slow, you guys. We have a construction going on in that store, and I swear it messes with our, our internet. So, but I will put uh, Angie's website down in the because that's like, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking about you talking about loving the land and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, of course, this is what you do. You you pickle you you grow these vegetables and you pickle them and you so, so of course um, that makes total sense that green taro would be an element of. You know, it's not, and I hope that I make sense saying this, it's not necessarily that it's green Tara. It's that yes. it's Angie's, her, her Sophia code, her activation of the earth resonates with green Tara because she's also obviously got some of that activated as well. Now, Cindy, are you doing a course uh, um, soon? I say, uh, when is your next uh, sacred? Um, I was looking at one of, the, one of those courses. Yeah probably late i don't have anything on the schedule i mean most everything that i have right now those are just like workshops and we do the the high seasons we'll we'll do this that's the ritual one we'll do those we do those for every you know the eight high seasons and we have the one that's coming up for the summer solstice but it's not on there yet but as far as like the courses go with intuitive development and the ascension and all that i'm kind of reworking it and I'll probably start it up like late summer, fall, probably, because I'm trying to, uh, yeah, you know, usually when we start with the initiation, we start with the four elements and then trying to bring in some other aspects for it to feel more like the completion of the mystery school, like, because, you know, we have a mystery school aspect to the, the yoga studio and yeah. to go through it like from initiation with the elements and then through uh, um, like another thing I want to incorporate, for instance, like the moon I key rights. Yeah. Uh, Bryce, I know you received like your first three. Right? I, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, we need to do more of those. And I actually wanted to bring you on to do a whole special on the moon I key. I laugh so I know Cindy and I probably have spent past lives before because <laughs> there's only one person in this world who has ever spit on me and i was totally fine with that <laughs> part of the cleansing was spitting with the the florida water and i was like give it to me baby just give it to me. <laughs> so i actually wanted to bring you on to talk about the moon and key rights and what that is and all these beautiful because you know you guys even though cindy's in georgia she's peruvian and so there's all these different elements to these and i believe cultures are meant to be shared you know, I, I think mm -hmm. that all of our collective ancestors, whether they're Latin American, South American, Native American, white, European, African, I believe all of our collective ancestors wanted to share these lineages with each other because that's what I personally believe the 12 tribes of Israel really are. And that's these right. galactic um, lineages that have ended up on this earth. Mm -hmm. They come across as different races or cultures, but all they really are is different in, in different heritage. I know the Native Americans had a story that they would tell their young that every person of every lineage had something to offer. And the trick was learning how mm -hmm. to work together, right? There's things that Latin people can do that white people can't. There's things that white people can do that Latin people can, and, and black people, we, if we work together and share each other's cultures, that's how we learn and we inactivate our own inner knowing because deep in our DNA, even though I'm predominantly white, I have other lineages as well in my DNA that aren't as dominant, but that doesn't mean they're not there. That doesn't that mean it reminds me of like the Hopi prophecy, the Hopi. Yeah. yeah it reminds me of, of some of that, that I've read about a little bit. So yeah, that's cool. I mean, according to 23 and me, whether that's true or not, I've got a lot of Coptic Egyptian <laughs> and I laughed mm -hmm. when I saw that because I'm blonde hair, blue eyed. I got a lot of Greek in me, which I was like, well, that explains why I get tan easily. But, you know, so there are mm -hmm. these elements that that we have in us. And, and if we can see beyond the limitations of this earth and understand there is, you know, we know the Druid. I know, Indi uh, Cindy, even though you're approving, you have some Irish in you, too. Like there's didn't you say you have some Irish in you as well? Yeah, I had like two or three percent or some Irish. I'm like, what? Where did that come from? Yeah, I, I, I would say I wasn't surprised by the Southern 
Europe, you know, the uh, Portuguese and Spain. Yeah. Because, you know, I had a, a good uh, amount of that in there. But, the yeah, I had like a higher percent of Irish than I thought, which was interesting. I need to do one of these things. I've never done any of that. I don't know why I was scared. It's interesting. It's, um, (laughs) well, it's, uh, I will say, so the Irish, that's the Celtic and Druid culture that that's Magdalene's culture. And that comes from Mm -hmm. the planet Kentucky, not Kentucky guys, not saying the state Kentucky, (laughs) I'm saying the planet Kentucky, Kentucky, the Cassiopeians talk about the Kentuckians. They were oriented. Good. They were good, positively oriented. That's the red hair, the uh, blonde hair, blue eye, green eyes the celtic it's the boudica it's the um you know in the celtic and druid culture like that is very intense and there's a lot of great healing mm-hmm. arts within the druid and celtic cultures mm-hmm. and so you know it, it's it's we're all here to share that and even if you are black or white just check you probably have some mm-hmm. other something else in there too that's magical for you and can be that that part of that dna can be activated and that's all we're really looking for to kind of round up the episode in the sophia code literally in in my opinion if i just like pitch this in one sentence it's self-activation yeah Mm -hmm. for your spiritual dna that is literally what the sophia code take the book out is literally activating a side of your dna that's just been dormant Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Maybe that's missing the mark if you don't activate it. So the endorment. Yeah, it's um, it's, so I would highly suggest like you can't go wrong with this book. I've ne- I've yet to meet a person who read this book and was like, meh. <laughs> I've met to, I've yet to meet that person. I've met people who's like, oh, you know, I picked it up and I don't get it. I don't understand it. Like, that's like, and I've gotten that a few times, but then it is it, it, just like one of those things w- that we talked about at the beginning. Well, it, it's, it'll meet you with where you are yeah. when you're ready to understand it. Like really, you're going to, it's going to, it's going to appear. It, it's it's going to work for you. But if you're not quite, you know, ready to understand it, then it's going to well, look like it, it always reminds me of, you know, like when you watch some of the, the magical movies on Hollywood or anything like that. And, you know, they have the magical books, but they're like, um, only certain people can see it. Like yeah. if some, someone who isn't ready to see it, it's just, it's like all blank pages. You don't get the information, but the person who's, uh, uh there's a truth to that. Yeah. Cause totally. like with any of the sacred texts is the exact same way. I mean, you'll open it. It might not be invisible, but it might as well be. Cause when you look at it, you won't understand the words or the words won't make any sense to you. Mm-hmm. And that's but then such- when you're ready, the words will totally pop and they'll make sense to you. And, and that's how, you know, that's how, you know, I always feel like that's when you know there's something to that text or if it's really a, like a truly magical book, it's the same, the Bhagavad Gita is the exact same way. Like yeah. the first time I read it, I didn't, I was like, what that? I didn't understand anything. You're like, why do I care about this dude going to war? Like- <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it wasn't until reading it several times through that it finally started to reveal itself to me because, you know, it meets you with where you are. And I think there's a lot of books yeah. that, that do that. Now i got to add another sutras. book to my shelf. What's well, the same with the that. Yoga Sutras? I'll tell you the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. for those who, who are really, because I love the Bhagavad Gita. This is probably one of the best commentaries. I love Ram Dass. Um, and you can see yeah. my my book is old and I've got, it's like, about under you know the underlying things but um yeah and it's the same with the yoga sutras the more the more i practice yoga my first time reading the yoga sutras 17 years ago versus today is completely changed my perceptive on perception of what patanjali is saying but i am feeling inclined to do this because i already released an episode this morning because we are giving a giveaway for um, some of the ASEA stuff, and I'm going to give away a Marnie Alton gift card as well. I'm going to, for this, I've been, I feel like I'm being told to do this. If you are somebody watching this right now and you do not have the Sophia code, um, and you would like to, I'm going to give away a Sophia code. So if you mm-hmm. put down in the, the comment section below on Esoteric Atlanta your name and Sophia beside it, um, I'll give it a week. I'm giving it a week from the other video as well. I will draw names and whoever I draw, I will send you a copy of the Sophia code. So, um, and you'll just have to let me nice. know if you're not, not in the United States. I'll make sure if you, if English is not your first language, I will make sure that you get this book in your first language. Cause this book does come in multiple languages. So, um, so yeah, so let's, I'm just feeling inclined to do that. So if you, um, 
yeah, if you don't have the Sophia code, um, just put your name with Sophia beside it in a week's time. I'll do a drawing. Or if you're too impatient, you want to get the book right away, I'll put a link to the book down in the description box below so you can easily just order it for yourself now. So I just, I just hope... Um, I, I always want everybody to do their own research on this channel and to really that's part of taking your power back is making sure that you understand things for yourself because you are, you know, I, I really hope people get that, that you are that special. You, you know, you don't need someone to save you because you have the ability to save yourself and that is your superpower. Um, my mother used to tell us all the time, if you allow someone to take care of you, then you allow them to control you. And so allowing somebody else to save you is giving your power away to somebody else. And that's the last thing we want anybody to do. We want you guys to understand just how magical and truly special each and every person watching this right now, regardless of where you are in the world, whatever your race is, gender, doesn't matter. You are a fractal of God. And that is the, that is that fractal of the Sophia Code. And so you have, there is nobody on this world that is spe more special than anybody else you are you are truly loved by the divine because you're part of the divine and, and that is the one thing people take from the sphere code that that you you can do this there is help if you need help understanding cindy's an incredible healer you do healing sessions on zoom too correct cindy mm -hmm. yeah so, i mean like, i do the uh healing sessions and and then i do like a for someone who wants like a deeper like a 90 day mentorship healing all sorts of all sorts of things into one in a 90 day program as well, where if you just uh, basically <clears throat> what I, what I feel is, you know, someone who like, as a healer is uh, all we're really doing is saving you time. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Know, yeah, I mean, yeah. do you want to, do you want to wonder go right ahead and start to do it now? Or do you want to wait? Or do you want to wait another lifetime? I don't know. I mean, it's up to you, but we're just yeah. the cat we're just catalysts for time. That's a har harmony. My friend Harmony and Candy used to say if you practice with <laughs> yoga, you're just speeding your karma up. That's all you're doing. You know, you're like yeah, you're speeding it up. Speeding the, the process, process up. up for you and helping you get, you know, realize and, uh, and so helping you do the get into the place where you can do the work and providing a space for you, like a more a container that's specifically aligned for you to do your work. Absolutely. And yeah. so I want everybody to be clear. Be, there is a, a huge difference between a cult leader and a healer and a teacher. <laughs> a healer, we talked about this yesterday at the Shala, a healer and a teacher is going to help you, give you the template, coach you, you know, help you see your blind spots, but they're totally going to be hands off when it comes to you doing your own work and you integrating th that into yourself. A cult leader, not so much. So mm -hmm. uh, I've had incredible teachers and, you know, and it is true that like, you can wander around and find all this information out for yourself. But if you have somebody that's walked down the road first and can help guide you and give you their experiences, even better, even yeah. better. So I'll put all those links to all sit for both Angie and Cindy down in the description box below. So you guys can, um, if you want to, um, for either, if you want the fickle chickle, the, 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 the I'll say the, the fickles, the chickles, the, the, the pickles. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Mercury retrograde. Um, or if you want to connect <laughs> with Cindy, um, also again, I do teach on Sundays at sacred garden yoga. We have mm -hmm. opened up the zoom. I know a lot of my uh, students who are in other countries couldn't make it last week but um yeah so those those guys got to do some second series which <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was just us but if you want to join us on sundays too uh my class is at 8 30 a.m eastern time that's the new york city time so if you're coming from elsewhere in the world you're more than welcome to join me on sundays or most of cindy all of cindy's classes are on zoom as well so you can check mm -hmm. out the sacred garden website and pop into any of the classes just make sure that you are aligned with the proper time Again, we are Eastern time. That's the same as New York City. So wherever you live in the world, we got some people in Texas that join us. They're always like two hours behind us. So they're up early on a Sunday to take those classes. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So just make sure you check with your local time and make sure. So, all right, two ladies, anything else you want to say before we sign out? I love being a student. So I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you all very much for meeting with me of today. course yeah. the door girl. Me. Me. <laughs> including me so yeah thanks. of course yeah. <laughs> all right you guys we'll talk to you all later bye everybody